Today I'll answer a commonly asked question about drawing tablets with a screen, and that is, do you really need a screen protector? First, what is a screen protector? A screen protector is a thin film of transparent plastic that adheres to your screen. These products claim to enhance various aspects of your device by adding a layer of protection, keeping your screen clean, reducing glare, or adding a paper-like feel to the surface you're drawing on. While many devices come with a screen protector pre-applied, many do not. There are hundreds if not thousands of third-party screen protectors available for just about any device with a display. I have not personally used most of these products, so I cannot say whether they are effective or not. But in my opinion, it's not about whether a screen protector is effective, it's whether it's even necessary. Before I get into the details of that, let's talk a little bit more about why someone would want a screen protector. The main concern with displays seems to be scratches. No one wants to spend hundreds or thousands of dollars on a screen that gets ruined with a huge gash. Under normal use, you shouldn't be able to scratch your screen. However, if you are careless, it is possible. I've personally scratched the screen on my previous Cintiq. It happened because I was careless when I moved it in the car, and the screen was not properly padded. Something must have rubbed against it, causing a light 2-inch scratch. Did the scratch ruin it and make the tablet unusable? No. In fact, I could only see the scratch with the screen powered off. Occasionally, my pen would run across it and I could feel the scratch, but it didn't interrupt my flow or make it difficult to draw. Aside from the light scratch I caused by being careless, no damage ever occurred simply from drawing on the tablet. My current Cintiq 27 QHD has been used daily for over six years, and the screen is still in really good condition. Even my Mobile Studio Pro, which is a portable display tablet, is scratch-free, and I have used it outdoors, at the beach, and other places where it could have been scratched. But I also learned my lesson the hard way, so I try to take good care of my stuff. You can keep your screen scratch-free by following these best practices. Replace your pen nib if it's jagged or badly worn. A severely worn nib could cause scratches. Keep your hands clean and free from dust and debris. A tiny bit of sand trapped in a drawing glove could scratch your screen, for example. If you move your screen, make sure it's properly padded, or better yet, put it back in the original box. Keep your screen away from kids, pets, or anything in your environment that might damage the screen. If your screen is portable, always keep it in a padded case when it's not in use. I think it's also important to distinguish between debris, light scuffs, and deep scratches. As the pen is moving across the screen, it creates friction, especially if the screen has some tooth or a rough texture. Just like the lead from a pencil wears down as it applies to a piece of paper, the worn plastic residue from a pen nib will stick to a screen. This creates extremely faint blemishes that look like scratches, but are not. You can simply wipe them away with a clean microfiber cloth. You might also think you're seeing scratches when in fact it's just the pen plowing through oil or debris on your screen. This can also be wiped away. Many screen protectors claim they can keep your screen clean. I suppose that could make sense, the screen protector is what gets dirty, but you still have to clean the screen protector. So I guess the advantage is that if you were to scratch the screen while cleaning it, the screen would be protected. Replacing a screen protector is difficult, but replacing the screen itself might be impossible from a technical or even financial point of view. In my opinion, microscopic scratches from normal cleaning aren't a major concern, but if it really bothers you, you'd be better off just wearing a glove to prevent oils from getting on the screen in the first place. Do be careful when cleaning your display, because that may cause scratches too if you use something dirty or abrasive. Even with the softest cloth, you'll still be rubbing microscopic bits of rough debris around on your screen, which could cause microscopic scratches over a long period of time. I have a video you can watch with some tips for safely cleaning your display. That's kind of a catch-22. A dirty screen causes scratches, but so does cleaning your display. But this is more trivial than an actual thing you should be concerned about. In my opinion, it would be best to keep the screen reasonably clean rather than neglect it. This promotes taking care of your devices, which will benefit you in the long run. If after cleaning your device many times, you do notice some very faint microscopic scratches, that's normal. A screen protector could protect the screen against this, but honestly, you will never notice scratches like this when the display is on, nor will you ever feel them while drawing. 
So unless you want to trip about it, there's really no reason to. If microscopic imperfections bother you, there's no avoiding it, because you'd still see them on your screen protector. And as we will learn shortly, there may be other imperfections caused by the screen protector that are much more of a distraction. Now let's discuss major scratches. This is really what will ruin a screen, and a piece of thin film is not going to protect against that. As I mentioned earlier, I scratched one of my Cintiqs while moving it in the car. Would a screen protector have prevented that? It's possible, but I'll never know. What I do know is that I accidentally dropped my phone face down onto the gravel last year, which did have a screen protector pre-applied, and I still ended up with a deep scratch that barely missed my camera lens. The screen protector looked like the surface of the moon though, so the screen protector definitely worked in that regard. My phone screen would have been ruined had it been bare. Because computer nerds like us don't run track, the likelihood of dropping your display tablet onto gravel is fairly low, but I thought I'd share an extreme example of how you might be able to push the limits of your screen protector. If you dropped a display tablet, more than the screen would be broken. I'd be surprised if it even worked at all, and chances are, if the screen is delicate enough, it would shatter or crack. Most of us will just keep our devices on a desk, so protecting against this level of damage is probably overkill. Next, let's weigh the advantages and disadvantages of using a screen protector so we can get a feel for whether or not it's worth it. As I've mentioned, a screen protector can absorb reasonable levels of damage from superficial scuffs to scratches. Some screen protectors may offer a minor reduction in glare depending on the type. This can make drawing on a glossy screen more comfortable, but it may come at the expense of dulling the colors or making the display look slightly blurry. And a screen protector can give the surface of the display more tooth or friction so that it feels more like you're drawing on paper. Without this friction, many high gloss displays like the iPad feel very slippery to draw on. The Wacom 1 and the Cintiq 22 are some examples of displays that come with a screen protector pre-applied to change the feel of the surface and reduce glare. In contrast, the higher-end Cintiq Pros have an etched glass surface, which provides friction and glare reduction, so they don't require a screen protector to achieve those properties. Now for the disadvantages to using a screen protector. First, if your display came with a screen protector pre-applied, an official replacement may not even be for sale. I am only able to find third-party anti-glare film for the Cintiq 16, and I have no way of knowing if it'll work or not other than reviews, which can't always be trusted. Second, screen protectors are very difficult to apply. You must squeegee out every single bubble of air between the film and the display. Otherwise, if bubbles remain, it can damage the screen protector and obscure your view of the screen. In my experience, heat and friction can cause the film to separate from the display surface, which causes the edges to peel off first, causing bubbles, and then eventually tears. Some screen protectors come with an elaborate template you can use to apply the film without creating many bubbles to begin with but it's not a fun process. It gets even less fun as your screen gets larger in size. And if you mess up even once, you may trap dust, oil, hair, and debris between your screen and the film. You might even instantly ruin the film and have to buy another. Which brings me to my third con. These screen protectors are not cheap. They range from $20 up to $40 or more for a thin sheet of plastic that isn't meant to last a lifetime. Fourth, when it comes time to remove a damaged screen protector, it may leave adhesive residue. Fifth, some screen protectors can interfere with fingerprint recognition on phones, especially thicker ones like the tempered glass type. I'm not sure if it affects a multi-touch on drawing tablets, but that could be a consideration as well. And last, and most importantly, a screen protector may not protect against deep scratches, the kind that really matter. If something devastating happens to your screen, a thin sheet of plastic is not going to do much, if anything. So do you really need a screen protector? In my opinion, higher-end display tablets like the Wacom Cintiq do not need a screen protector because they're built tough and made to be drawn on heavily. They have tooth and glare reduction built in, and you can find used Cintiqs from ages ago that are still in great condition, despite predating a world awash in screen protectors. A screen protector would give you some peace of mind, but it also might reduce the image quality of the screen. Lower end display tablets will probably have a screen protector pre-applied, though I think it's better to invest in a screen that does not rely on anti-glare film because you may not be able to find an official replacement or have the means to apply it correctly like they do in the factory. If your display does not have any protection, I think you should weigh the pros and cons to see if it makes sense. 
If your tablet is super slippery like the iPad Pro, it might be a worthwhile trade-off to get a paper-like feel in exchange for a reduction in image quality, or maybe even some bubbles. After dropping my phone, I immediately replaced the screen protector, but I have since removed it because despite coming with a template, the film was misaligned to my screen, bubbles kept reappearing, the film kept peeling off, and it finally ripped. I have a spare film and I could get a free replacement under my lifetime warranty, but at this point it was more trouble than it was worth, so I'm rocking a naked screen. I could try another type of screen protector that will inevitably wear down or become damaged, but then I'm investing a lot of money into sheets of film when I could have just paid the same amount for insurance to fully replace my phone. The bottom line is, a thin little sheet of plastic film is not going to do much, if anything, to improve your device. In fact, a screen protector might even make it perform worse. If it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. That brings us to the end of this video. For more drawing tablet reviews and advice, subscribe and become a member if you haven't already. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.